Svelte Radio. Hey, it's another Svelte Radio episode. Yay. And today we have a great one. So, so many guests. We have the whole of Svelte Sirens on. And so we're we're seven people here and, and it's going to be a blast. Uh, so uh, say hello, everyone. Hey. Hello. Hi. Hey. Hello. Hola. <laughs> Hola. <laughs> Try not to step over each other. <laughs> yeah, and of course, Sean and Anthony is here, are here as well, as usual. But yeah, so we thought this this could be a fun and interesting episode, and uh, we're yeah we're gonna talk about felt sirens basically. So before we start, let's uh, let's uh, introduce ourselves. So I'm Kevin, as you all probably know, and then we have the other hosts. Anthony, say hello. Hey, I'm Anthony. Oh, I'm always here. <laughs> and Sean? Just never leaves. Hey, I'm sick. <laughs> and then we have the sirens. So let's let's start with Willow. Hi, uh, I'm, I'm Malay. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> and then, yeah, who's next? Steph, maybe? Or Brittany? Hey, I'm Steph. Welcome, welcome. Brittany? Hey, I'm Brittany. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, last but not least welcome 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 everyone to, to this Jen. exciting episode this is a bit hard i have to admit like talking to to six people at the same time but we're gonna get through it so before we get into the deep end here so what's svelte sirens yeah so the svelte sirens i always explain it as kind of a subset of svelte society for women and non-binary people and our allies so anyone can actually be a part of the svelte sirens but we want to focus on those women and non-binary people and currently right now we do monthly talks and live streams to show how to integrate different things with svelte but we've got a lot of fun things planned for the future so that's kind of what it is and what we're doing for the moment. Cool, cool. So uh, how did you guys uh, start this thing? Yeah, so Sean actually was looking for people to help grow Svelte and had asked me early last year if I had any interest in like helping start the Svelte Sirens. And I was like, ooh, that's a really cool name. But I was slammed and did not have extra time. My kids were like in school or not in school yet. We were in the summer and it was just a busy time. So I put it off and it was maybe September of last year when I messaged him again and I was like, hey, has anyone taken you? up on this offer? Is there any interest in it? And he said he hadn't gotten anything. So I was like, okay, my kids are all in school now. I have some free time. Let me start this thing. So I reached out to a couple of people and that was Willow and Steph and Jen. And we co-founded the Svelte Sirens. We announced it at Svelte Summit in the fall. And uh, the three of us, Steph, me, and Jen got to meet in person at the Svelte Summit watch party in New York. But we had Willow phone in and did it with us on video. So that was fun. And that's kind of yeah. our intro story. But anyone yeah, else great. have anything to add? <laughs> All right. So the uh, you guys have a website as well, which is a pretty fun website. There's a lot of, uh, like, th the bubbles on there are ex ex exciting. I, I remember you guys were working on this for, for like, a couple of days. <laughs> So maybe how, Willow can talk about the bubbles because yeah. she <laughs> created the bubbles and then um, Brady actually added the sound for that. So that was super oh, cool. Oh, right. Every, oh, everyone loves the sound? bubbles. I didn't know there's sound. Oh, there yeah. is. <laughs> <laughs> there is, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I must say, Kevin, um, most of the work, you know, that's been done on the website really is, is you know, attributable to yeah. uh, Brittany, mostly, and, and Willow uh, you know, doing a lot of the yeah, work. Yeah, it's um, nice. So you can see, so you honestly, have on there, so, like, yeah, the, and it's, it's the streams a, a that you've really done great and website. stuff like that, right? Yep, there are previous streams that we have done, links off to those to YouTube, and then we have upcoming streams as well. And there's also a link to the Google Calendar, which has all of our events on it. That's awesome. That's great. All right, so um, who are you all? Like, how did you find Svelte? Why did you pick Svelte? Answer all of the questions, please. <laughs> <laughs> 
Maybe I could start. Yeah, um, so I'm Jen Ashley. I've been very involved in the community and it's not just uh, in one community. I tend to be involved in a lot of like different things, especially here in London. And I run a, a lot of tech media groups and a lot of like women in tech groups as well. And I actually found out about Svel. Uh, I'm not sure if it's through Anthony, honestly. I think and I think he's also the one who invited me to the uh, the Discord group. Uh, if I remember correctly, but I, I know that Anthony and I were like uh, communicating, you know, on Twitter, and that's probably how I got involved with with uh, Svelte. I, I uh, honestly can't remember now. I think but, uh, I think you're right. Yeah. Was it like that? Yeah, yeah. Well, so you, I think it actually happened with you, and it happened with Scott as well, and. I think it also happened, maybe we've got like an exposure problem. It happened with uh, Isn't It as well. So basically, people independently oh, yeah. approached me on Twitter saying, is there a Svelte society? Uh, like, is, sorry, is there a Svelte meetup? Uh, if not, I want to start one. And I'm like, oh, just join us. And it's happened like three times. So maybe like we need more marketing behind behind the meetups. <laughs> right. <laughs> but they seem to be pretty popular though, right? Yeah, I, th- I think they are popular. I think, I think the ones who've done it are growing and growing. But uh it's weird that maybe like they're not on Twitter somewhere. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we can maybe we can push them out a bit more on on Twitter. I was yeah. actually thinking about that too because we were talking a little offline on Discord about how no one has really joined the Svelte Sirens. Like they're not a part of the Svelte Sirens community. And I kind of feel like Svelte Society is the same way. How it's like a community of people that talk and chat, but it's not like doesn't seem like something you join. And you're a part of so maybe we do have like some room there to grow and like market this differently yeah yeah and and i think that's what i was referring to as you know in terms of like growing a community because we do need to kind of have uh or, or be at a stage where people are actually self-identifying as a as a member of you know a, a community so i think there's a lot of work that that we need to do there uh definitely yeah it's interesting, like the the problem of getting people to join. I don't even know what you'd call it, like a these tech communities in in a way. I think I think people often find that they're they feel that they're already members, even though they've not like officially joined in some capacity. If that makes sense, we need a induction process. We need to. <laughs> Is there hazing and involved? Our- Hazing. <laughs> yeah. Special ring, uh, special handshake. I think we're going to scare people away. <laughs> yeah, I think this is this is the opposite of what we want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I think, yeah, maybe we can think of, uh, you know, ways to, for people to just kind of proudly say, yes, I am part of this community. I, am, uh, I don't know what, what, what we even call either you know, the community members, Svelters or, or something. Uh, obviously for Svelte Sirens, Svelte Sirens. Um, I don't know. Uh, in the, some some uh, like groups sometimes with the badges or something. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm just thinking out loud here, honestly. Facial yeah, tattoos. We... <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I mean, we, we... Tattoos, yeah. We, we do have the like the badges on the on the Discord, but that's mostly just for, for like organizers of, of Svelte mm-hmm. Society. I think we could... Maybe I don't know if we could do something about that on the Discord. Uh, I know that I'm planning on on like rebuilding the website, and that's gonna entail like all all sorts of like member functionality and stuff like that. So Ooh. could maybe do something with that. But uh, yeah, maybe it's maybe awesome. we could yeah. fold in. Maybe not fold in Svelte Sirens, but maybe we could do some collaboration there. Combine the the member systems so we can like. I don't know. I'm just uh, thinking out loud. <laughs> I'll mention something. So, uh, I those of you who have met me in person, um, I actually wear a wristband, um, and it's it's a black and green wristband, and it's a wristband that I got from ViewConf, and I've been wearing it for three years now. And it's not like a particular. Like, I, obviously, I enjoy View, and I I, just, I had a really good time there. But I like having some item that I can wear that's not a, a, a obtrusive that signals yeah. I'm part of a community. And so maybe you can work on something like that. I, I think there's someone who maybe worked on a keychain in the past. Um, I don't know. But 
uh, yeah, I would, so, I would yeah. wear his fault. Oh, uh, that's uh, that, <laughs> that's actually my assignment, I think, uh, to to uh, to do the uh, the merchandising bit. Swag. Uh, I have I have yeah this one I have started uh, with some already I need to just continue uh, working on that site and <laughs> get it out there, but yeah I'll I'll definitely uh, try and and uh, and get that done sooner. <laughs> I think this is but yeah I I, I think this is fine for somebody who has like a cult like dedication to felt like me but I think that Sean and and Jen are involved in pretty much everything. And you're going to have like an entire arm full of like bands until your circulation gets cut, cut off. So I'm not sure like why you volunteered for that, but sure, let's make wristbands. Well, it could could be anything. Of swag. Anything. Yeah. yeah exactly. Like stickers yeah. or something would be really cool. But I think we got way off track. So let's get back yeah. to... Yeah. Yeah. Let's get back to... <laughs> to how we got started. I think we were, we were all excited by swags. Yeah. <laughs> I li- I, it's free flowing. I like it. I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we need we need more introductions. Like, uh, yeah. Oh, we haven't heard from Steph. everyone. Yeah, yeah Steph, wanna go? Exactly. Yeah, I'll go ahead and hop in. I'm Steph Dietz. I work at Vercel on the DevRel team. And what were the three questions? The first one was, "How did I find out about Svelte?" I think yeah. I found out about Svelte two years ago. Someone commented on one of my YouTube videos asking me to do a tutorial on it, and I had no clue what it was. So of course, I like took to Google. And Googled it, and I thought it was really cool, but I had just started learning how to code, so I just, like, kind of made a mental note. I think I actually tweeted out, like, I was adding it to my list of things to learn. And two years later, I finally started learning it. When I joined Vercel, they asked me what I wanted to create content on, and I thought it would be cool to give, like, my first impressions in a blog post of switching from Vue to Svelte. And what the learning curve was like. And you guys know it's like once you start with Svelte, you don't want to stop. So yep. next thing I knew, I was just like <laughs> completely switching frameworks from Vue to Svelte. And I have not looked back. That is that is a good good review of Svelte. Yeah. <laughs> and you even um, did a course recently, right? Or some kind of workshop thing? Yeah, I, I'm working on it right now. So I'm working on a complete Svelte and Svelte Kit course. So from knowing nothing about Svelte to having all the knowledge you need to know to build out a full app. And that's going to be released pretty soon, but not quite yet. Cool. Exciting. Yeah. Exciting. It's it's sponsored by Vercel. Like it's, it's just very, still very new to me that Vercel has embraced Svelte so quickly, so fast. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be sponsored by Vercel, hosted on Vercel. Yeah. I mean, that everyone at sense. Vercel loves Svelte Kit, so it's super exciting. I'm glad yeah. that I get to work with it at Vercel. Yeah, do you do you get to interact with anything with Rich? Yeah. Yeah, he yeah. anytime I have a question, I can go to him and he's going to be reviewing my course before I actually post it, which is awesome. Oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah. That's convenient. Nice. That, actually that's cheating. That's <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> It's got it's got the uh blessings. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Cool. And then uh, Willow, I think you're you're next. Yeah. Um, so I hi, I'm Willow. Uh, I do freelance and open source. I guess I got involved with Svelte two years ago, maybe something like that. I found I I wanted to to escape jQuery actually. I mean, I know people usually like I want to escape React or something, but you know, um, I wanted to escape jQuery. And I was looking around and I saw a Fireship video on what's new in Svelte 3. And I was like, this this looks great. So um, I started digging around and I found a project called Routify. And I started trying to contribute to that. And then I, that's how I got involved with open source. And then it just kind of snowballed from there. Yeah. Nice. Routify is I, I love Routify. I've used it a lot. And Jake yeah. is, is great as well. Go listen to the Routify episode, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We got to get those plugs in that in one there. as well. <laughs> I think that leaves me. I'm Brittany Postma. Mm-hmm. I'm a software engineer at Granger, and I was actually originally hired to build our design system and component library in Svelte. And that was really fun, but We did switch to React in December, which I'm really sad about, but still working there and building the design system in React and Storybook now, which we'll get back to Storybook in our unpopular opinion section. (laughs) (laughs) 
So I learned about Svelte when I was, I had taken this React course and I had built a site in Gatsby for my portfolio. And I was listening to Syntax FM at the time and just kept hearing Scott gush about Svelte. And I'm like, I have to try this. Like if somebody loves it that much, I feel like I need to get in on that. And so as soon as I tried it, I switched everything that I had at the time. So my portfolio site, I had like a blog site, I had like a couple different things. They all went on to Sapper and I was just instantly in love. And I think it was just the developer experience was so much better than anything. I'd had experience with, and it felt more like that vanilla HTML, CSS, and JavaScript that I had originally learned. And I didn't feel like the complexity got in my way to where I couldn't understand the special sugar syntax. I could just write some vanilla stuff and it made sense to me. And I really love it. Yep. That's pretty much how I got into Svelte as well. It's a, it seems to be like a recurring theme, like everyone just tries it and just like falls in love. Kind of. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. So have you guys tried any other frameworks? How do you how do you like compare? Well, I guess since since you're here, you probably like Svelte, hopefully, compared to the other frameworks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I've messed around with a few frameworks. And actually when I first started at Vercel, I was hired to create Vue content because I was a Vue developer. And I still love Vue and I use it um for some projects, but I mean, it's like once you test out Svelte, like it's the only framework you really want to use. So I'm so excited for the Svelte community to keep growing and for it to become more mainstream. It's it's really nice. I hope uh, I hope you you guys will make it to to Svelte Summit this fall, so you can uh, so we can all meet up. That would be fun. Yes, we do have to all go yeah. and meet up there. That would be really yeah. great. <laughs> do we have a date? Yes, September eighth and 9th. Okay, and I, I, I need to start planning for that. Yeah, you can. You can even yeah. buy tickets. Actually, <laughs> it's it's good to know that it's it's right before I uh, travel to Atlanta. So where is it going to be, though, uh, in, Kevin? In Stockholm. In Stockholm. Okay, yeah. that that's perfect. Yeah, at least for me. <laughs> yeah. very, very easy to, to organize. Well, yeah. it's still not going to yeah. be easy, but yeah. We're going to have to get some wristbands. Yeah, <laughs> wristbands. <laughs> yeah. Wristbands yeah. and yes. stickers. Oh, by that time, we already have uh, yeah the swags uh, signed up. <laughs> Much earlier than that. <laughs> okay, I just wanted to go, like get back to Kevin's uh, sort of question of comment. Uh, for in my case, I'm actually a hobbyist. Now, you know, like I was a software engineer when I started with Citigroup, but uh, then moved on to other roles. Uh, although I stayed on with coding, it's more a hobby for me uh, rather than something that I actually need for a job, you know, or a project. But obviously, you know, sticking with uh, coding, uh, you know, kind of helps me run some of the meetup groups that I run here in uh, in London. Um, and I would I wouldn't say I've got a favorite, honestly, because I'm like that. <laughs> you know, I I deal with mobile platforms with uh, web and all that, so I wouldn't say I've got a favorite. But from uh, you know from what I've seen, Svelte is a lot simpler to learn, and I think the the learning curve is you know, not as difficult or as steep as, as other frameworks. Yeah, yeah, it's it's uh, like I said, it's a it's a recurring thing, a recurring theme. Like mm -hmm. people try it, and it's just easy. <laughs> love it. Yeah. yeah. I totally forgot when I was talking to to mention Steph has a course coming out on Vercel. I actually have an intro to Svelte course coming out also on codingcat.dev. And I'm doing just an intro to Svelte for now, but I plan on adding more with Svelte Kit later and how to host on Netlify. So I'm kind of excited about that. Should be out. The intro part should be out soon. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Do you guys have links for all this so we can put it in the in in the old show notes i'll give you a link to the site i don't have the actual link yet because yep. it's not live that makes sense cool cool um, all right i can i can talk about how i got to felt um, go for it because basically i mean I, I have to admit i've not tried react that much because um for, for the exact reason that describes why i like felt because i found it kind of inaccessible i did use it professionally at a company for a while and i never really shelled with it and so i sort of looked at other options view is one of them um, which I quite liked. View was, was around about the sort of point where I, I quite liked using it. I'd already come from Angular, so I knew Angular. 
And then Svelte's the one that kind of made sense and I, I could use it and I picked it up very quickly and I was productive in it and I was putting things on prod in it within, it within a week of even knowing it existed. And I think all of those factors together, the accessibility, and I mean like accessibility for somebody who's not a particularly strong front end or I wasn't at the time, mixed with it's sort of fast, it's discreet, it kind of doesn't, you know, put a big library in the browser so you can put it on other people's sites without feeling guilty. All that stuff together made it sort of a winner. And yeah, like Steph, I can't turn back now. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So is there anything else that you guys want to talk about with regards to, to Svelte Sirens that we've missed? We're going to talk a bit about um, the, the future in a bit, but just wanted to... Okay. <laughs> no? All right. I guess we, we head into the future then. So what's uh, so what, what, what have you guys planned? So I, I think I mentioned earlier that, you know, I would like to see like a, a community and people identifying themselves as, uh, for example, specifically for, you know, for Svelte Sirens, as Svelte Sirens members or Svelte Sirens, or whatever we call them. So there are obviously like plans in terms of other things that are like virtual and uh, accessible remotely. And I think Brittany will talk about that in a bit. But for in-person involvement, there are plans. For example, Willow and I have already talk talked about doing a boot camp here in London. And I'm hoping that, that if that's successful, that that will be successful. And if it is, then we'll, uh, we'll roll it out to other cities as well where we can. So yeah, that's one thing I think where we're looking to grow the community a bit more. And I'll hand it over to Brittany to talk about other bits and, and the other members of Svelte Sirens as well, if there are other things you want to contribute with regards to the plans. Yeah, awesome. So um, currently we're doing the siren streams and I do them every two weeks with a guest. And unfortunately, we don't have a lot of women and non-binary people in this felt community right now. I would love it to be all of those people on the streams, but I'm just trying to show some things to get some excitement for the space to help people drive people into our community. So I have tomorrow, we have Luca Edwards coming on to teach us about Cloudflare. We have uh, Tomas Piros from Cloudinary coming in a few weeks. And we have to reschedule for Superbase because John Myers is supposed to come on and do one. Hopefully Willow's going to be able to jump on that stream and do that one. So there's some really exciting things coming. I would love to do it more often and maybe get to where I could do it once a week. That would be great. Yeah. And that's that's a that's huge uh, commitment, actually. So, congrats on yeah. on what yeah. you've done so far. I've been really impressed. Thank you. I think so. So you you mentioned Superbase here, isn't there? I think uh, Andrew that that's uh, hosted Svelte Summit with me a couple of times is is working as a DevRel at Superbase, and he's super into Svelte, if I remember correctly. Oh, cool. I had one yeah. planned with John and they had a baby. And so we oh. had to reschedule <laughs> it. So I don't know if you want to put me in touch with him, maybe he could fill in. Absolutely. Yeah. So he goes by Silent Works. Silent Works. Yeah. He's the one with the yeah. really sexy voice. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I guess that's it. It's it's so hard to like go into detail when we're this many. I'm not entirely sure where to go with this. So if anyone has any ideas, I'm very very open to to suggestions. I, I think we've covered you know a lot with regards to spell mm -hmm. sirens and uh, have talked about you know the the, the important bits <laughs> that people need to know. So I think I'm I'm happy with what we've covered so far. I'm not sure about others. No, I, th I think so. I think we've went over all the things that we're doing currently and what we're looking forward to yeah. in the future. I just want to get people excited about Svelte and draw more women and non-binary people into the community, give them a place where they can have a safe space to share and to get help and then just find other members that are like-minded. So One last thing is you don't need to be like a Svelte whiz to join our community. If you haven't even used Svelte before, we still encourage you to join and learn about it. Uh, it's a perfect place for beginners. You can ask any questions or issues you're, you run into, and you have all these people who want to help. So don't think you have to be really good at Svelte to join our community. And that, you know, as people, uh, sorry, and as people have heard, you know, from Brittany, from Willow, and Steph, and myself, you know, we people like uh, we haven't really been that involved in Svelte that long. 
so I, you know, everyone started from knowing nothing about it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so you know, I agree with what Steph said there. Uh, don't be afraid to just ask questions and get involved. So just yeah. uh, just a fifty foot elevator pitch. What what will I get for joining Spot Sirens, and uh, what 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 am I going to learn? What am I going to get from that? What am I, why do I want to join it? You get a tattoo. Well, <laughs> 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 but I guess it's yeah. I guess it's it's you know. I I think it was was it Brittany who mentioned or Seth who mentioned that it, you know is uh, what we're trying to create really is like a safe space for women and non binaries to just uh, get involved and allies you know as well to just get involved, share and learn together. So I think that's that's one of the things that I wanted to highlight. Uh, with regards to spell sirens. Exactly. I think we all just yeah. want to have a sense of community and have people that not just think the same things that you do. That's not what you want and not that are the exact same person as you, but you want to have a space where you can share the things you're excited about or ask questions in a friendly manner. And so that's what we're trying to provide here and get people excited about spell. I think that's the main goal for everyone. Here. Yeah. And an, an audience that's definitely listening and interested and excited for you. That's that's good. I like that. Absolutely. So I just had an idea. So the the boot camps that you were talking about, Jen, I wonder if we could we could bring those online somehow, maybe. Um, we we can do them online as well, but we want to try out I think the material first before. Yep doing that online but yeah definitely we'd like to expand it once it's more mature <laughs> definitely so sense. there are obviously there are a lot of resources you know that's being talked about right now so Steph has a course uh, Brittany's coming up with the course uh, we're doing a boot camp in person and uh, yeah we're hearing you know you Kevin and uh, in your suggestion that we expand it virtually as well so yeah definitely we'll we'll look into that Cool. I think that's a great idea. I think Front and Foxes does that, maybe. And maybe the React Robins has some like kind of spin on that also. And I think it would be great. It's just more accessible to people online, but I understand like mm-hmm. wanting to test content in person and I I yeah. get that. Yeah. All right. Something to explore. Okay. So do you guys wanna go into the unpopular opinions section? Ooh, yeah. You yes, I do. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> People seem excited. So if you don't have one, you don't have to to mention anything. Uh, I usually don't have an unpopular opinion. I only have popular opinions, of course. But yeah. So who, like want, who wants bad? to start? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so maybe maybe Anthony, you've you've written something here. Maybe, maybe I've written something. I was I think looking at the list, it's a pretty agreeable bunch here today. Um, yep. <laughs> we have very, very sort of um, mainstream opinions. My opinion is, of course, as always, completely on topic and relevant. I saw a Domino's van turn up to my house, not to my house, but to a neighbor's house earlier, and it sort of filled me with rage because I just don't believe that Domino's <laughs> pizza is pizza. It's just bread with, <laughs> with stuff on it. It's, it's literally just like, it's like this bread, round bread product that doesn't really resemble a real pizza. You know, that like, sounds uh, you so unappetizing. It. Round it, bread it, product. They should call it what it is, you know, call, just, just call it what it is. It, it makes sense. You know, it's, 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 it's not that the dough isn't like pizza dough. The toppings aren't <laughs> tasty. They're not healthy. They're not like flavorsome or quality. They're just like. Is pizza supposed to be healthy? <laughs> well, yeah, you well, know, you what? can you can make a pizza. You can make a pizza. I mean, like like there's nothing inherently unhealthy about pizza. It's, it's bread with toppings put in an oven, right? There's not it's not overwhelmed with grease. It's got probably a lot of cheese on it. But then you know, a good pizza doesn't have a wealth of cheese on it. It has a bit of cheese on to to you know augment the toppings. Um, you know, it? Domino's pizza is different. <clears throat> it's like they put those toppings on and they coat it in, in cheese because they want to disguise the cheap, horrible ingredients, right? And and that's why Domino's pizza isn't actually a pizza. They just call it Domino's, Domino's bread. Circle Bread. Um, but anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, I just, you know, if you, if, you, if you like Domino's, I urge you to go and try different kinds of pizza uh, it, that you may realize that, you know, relatively it's pretty bad. Yeah. Yeah, I actually have. I'm gonna. I'm gonna riff on this. So, <laughs> my my unpopular opinion is that Roman style pizza is better than Napol. Nep, how do you say this? Napolitan. Napolitan style pizza. Neapolitan. Neapolitan? Yeah. 
Neapolitan, that's the one. Yeah, 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 exactly. So Roman style pizza is like the, you get it by the weight in like squares. If you've ever had that, mm. it's pretty nice. Yeah, we do it by the yard, I think, here for that that style. Mm. Interesting. It's very good. I mean, I, see, I like kind of all kinds of pizza. I'm, I'm probably, I don't know, I'm torn between thin crust and thick crust, I suppose. But if, if you're talking about, you know, pizza that I really enjoy because I don't have it, I don't get to have it that often. It's the kind of the Chicago style. There's only one place near me that actually does it. And whenever I look, it's not actually open. Obviously, it's a completely different mm. dish again. But because I never have it, I really sort of crave it sometimes. Yeah, I grew up in a suburb of Chicago and I miss deep dish pizza every day. Mm, every day. <laughs> so good. So good. I had it like a couple <laughs> a couple weeks ago in Chicago and it oh, is delicious. It is so good. So I had it there's told- exactly one in London, uh Anthony. In ha- in Hackney, right? No, in, in Soho. It's oh. I discovered it through a friend. It is J J A P E S. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. That's going in the show notes just for me, I think, actually. Yeah. But, <laughs> <laughs> um it def- Definitely good. <laughs> that sounds good. I mean, so the, so the weird thing is I, I had it in Palo Alto of all places. Uh, there's a place called Paxty's. Um, and they're like, yeah, eat this pizza and like try and eat one slice, but you might not make it. And I'm like, whatever. And then, you know, and I, di- I didn't quite make one slice. But anyway, they, they were like, oh, get this honey and put it on the crust. And I'm like, what are you on about? But when you do it, it's like, yes. Yes, it's really good. <laughs> I've not had that before. Have you had so, pa- so pineapple on pizza? Scott- yeah, Scott, you and I should uh, make a trip to Soho. Yeah, I'm in. I'm in. Oh, that'd be fun. I, I, so I have a side note on uh, London and American food. Um, oh. So I was in London when Shake Shack arrived. Um, I think it was in like, Covent Garden <laughs> or something. And that was okay. a huge line. Oh, Shake Shack and Five Guys arrived, right? So obviously everyone was like, okay, let's go compare both of them. And recently I saw that Popeye's opened the, the first store in London. Um, yes. Yep. And like, there's, there's always this huge rush. So like, basically, I think there's a business in importing American like food chains into mm-hmm. uh, into London and then just marking it the, up and making it like really fancy. <laughs> there is. Did you hear there's, that there was an In and Out pop up recently? Oh, no, oh yeah, how did I go? Yeah, uh, I I don't know yet. To be honest, <laughs> I I I just knew that it was happening, so I wasn't sure. But I'm not a fan of In and Out. <laughs> I think that's my unpopular opinion. <laughs> Yeah, like I, uh, I, I've traveled to California a lot, and my cousins, oh, you know, uh, will always say no when I ever I suggest that we go to uh, eat it out. <laughs> and one time they they agreed, uh, and I was underwhelmed basically. I'm, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna lay into a secret, Sean, about about these American import pop ups. Um, people who live in London don't eat at them. Like we don't go to Shake Shack, and we don't go to we not. Popeyes hasn't been here very long, but we don't we don't go to these places because they're just not particularly good. So, is it we, American tourists that are going there? It's a, it's, <laughs> it's probably American tourists because that's what happens, right? People from the UK go to other countries and eat McDonald's as well, which is I just don't understand. But um, yeah, it is that. But I think it's just tourists from other countries. I think it's because it's a popular thing. We have mm-hmm. um, Bubba Gump Shrimp's got this prime spot right in the middle of Trafalgar Square. And this, it's just full of tourists. There's no one, oh, no one native okay. goes in there. I, I know I'm a tourist, but yes, I love Love Gun Trip. It's so good. <laughs> I, love, I love the movie. I love the seafood. It's great. It's like, yeah, it's, it's, they, they ask you quizzes and they celebrate birthdays with you. It's amazing. Sorry. <laughs> I ate it in an airport once. By Bubba Gun Trip. <laughs> yeah, right. I ate it in an airport so, once. It was very nice, but I, I've not gone to one in, in London, no. I mean, I went once, but it was not me who dragged us there. <laughs> So uh, does anyone else have any unpopular opinions about pizza or any other topic? <laughs> any food? <laughs> yeah, pineapple. I hate to... Oh, God, Ooh. pineapple has to go on pizza. That's a thing here. So yes. if... That's a thing here. Yes, pineapple and pizza. I don't have a food one. I just don't want to distract from all this food conversation that's going yeah, right. on. So. <laughs> No, go ahead, I, go ahead. I love how Kevin put in her notes storybook question mark because that's kind of how I feel about it. Just like I <laughs> love the idea of storybook. It seems like it's great. Like you have this component library. You can see your components. You can play with the props. You can like visually like see the documentation and then see how the code looks. And it's a great in theory. And I don't know if it has to do with our specific API that we're creating at work, but story. Storybook errors are garbage. 
they are just the absolute worst. Like they're not descriptive. They don't tell you what happened. If you change the name of a story, like the title of a story, your page just shows this gigantic error and it doesn't tell you what that means. It just says that it doesn't exist anymore, which kind of makes sense. But it took me a long time to realize I just need to click on a story that actually exists. And so I just, I need some more descriptive errors from Storybook, I think. There's yeah. quite a few alternatives to Storybook. There are alternatives. Uh, like Veepbook and Svench. And I don't and have stuff. choice on what I'm using oh. at work, unfortunately. Uh, I wish I did. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, I personally <laughs> prefer just using Svelte Nobby and a Svelte component. I mean, I might just be old-fashioned, um, but always much easier. We did end up getting this felt example with Storybook to work, which was kind of interesting that, I mean, that was really difficult and we had to change like a whole lot of configs and get Vite to work with Webpack and it was a nightmare. I do not suggest using that. Yeah, that, that doesn't sound fun. So Willow, you're actually the first user of Svelte Nobby I've ever come across. Um, wow. <laughs> I mean, I learned about it because of um, Fractal, so there's two. It's Fractal. <laughs> <laughs> it's Brady. Brady? <laughs> yeah. He he did the music for uh for uh for the uh, and more the importantly podcast. the bubble the popping. Yes. More importantly oh, the right. bubble. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know who it is. Okay, so so this is like a story I mean it's it's weird cuz like you have to change the code and the whole the whole point of storybook is you don't have to change the code. I I don't know. So maybe I need to work this out. Yeah. I don't know. So you this have kind- to physically type in the prop and change the code there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's, uh, that's a uh, storybook. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You just can't eat it. It's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Sean, Willow, Steph, Jen, any, any of you have any unpopular uh, opinions? Not for me. <laughs> Jen's right. was that she didn't like in and out. Yeah, no. Oh, sorry, yeah. I missed that. Sorry, <laughs> oh, sorry, no, sorry. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I thought we were stuck in the in the like the American food. Um, yeah, well, I'll, I'll second there. that. <laughs> um, All right. Every every Californian is hyped up in and out to me, and I just do not get it. It's too greasy. Uh, it's, yeah, I mean, five yeah, days away. I don't know if anyone, any of you, will relate to this, but I live in Texas, and everyone's obsessed with Whataburger, and I just don't get the hype. It's it's gross, honestly. So that's my unpopular opinion, <laughs> Texas edition. <laughs> I've never had what? Whataburger. I don't, no, we it's not good. <laughs> how, do, how do you spell that? Is that like Whataburger? Oh, yeah. W H A T T A. Yeah, it's yeah. Water? Yeah. You know what? I, I, uh, I have relatives in San Antonio, and they took me to one of those. I think, and again, I wasn't impressed. Yeah, it's just not good. But yeah. every every like native Texan will tell you it's the best burger, and it's just not really. <laughs> Best burger in London is has got to be um, crap. I forgot the name of it. How bad is that? I haven't been oh, out for so long because of COVID, because of like lockdown. <laughs> um, is it pat- GBK? No, 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 no. Oh, no, that's that's new. That's Kiwi anyway. Oh, um, Honest Burger. Patty and Bun. <laughs> Honest is very good, but Patty, patty and, and Bun is just oh. epic. Really, really ours good here stuff. is Stella's, and they're stuffed burgers, and they have like mm. anything you want inside, so that you can get cheese or jalapenos. It is delicious love it that sounds oh amazing I mean, i'm so hungry no, you're all making me hungry oh. <laughs> we can can't get, get off <laughs> since we're, yeah, <laughs> since we're doing local uh, yeah i'm also hungry uh, <laughs> since we're doing local food i'm going to shout out a singapore uh chain called moss burger mm. it, it's like their oh, chicken yes. burger they have like a it's like 90 percent chicken patty and then there's like a bit of veggie <laughs> it's really good <laughs> So why is it a little bit of veggies? Is that is it to make it healthy or is it onions uh, or what? Uh, the appearance of health, yeah. But it's, <laughs> <laughs> like instead of fries, you can swap it out for more chicken. That's the thing. Wow. <laughs> it's keto version. Chicken overload. I need to go to I love it, and have that. <laughs> that does sound pretty good. That is amazing. KFC is rubbish yeah. as well. Okay, that's two two opinions. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, that's one too many. <laughs> Willow, do you do you also hate burgers? Uh, <laughs> uh, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I do not like KFC though. So there we go. Good. <laughs> I, I have a question. Like, do you think? Okay, so sorry. That m- maybe I'll just like end the food conversation with this. Do you think that we will <laughs> switch over to meat replacements in our lifetime? Like, do you think at a point it will be a point in your life 
where you will not eat meat ever. No, I think, yeah. yeah. I mean, for me, I can't taste the difference. I mean, I'm not like, and I'm, I'm, don't take food too seriously. So, but um, I'm just, I didn't switch because I'm just a bit lazy, really. I've never yeah, found, it's like, going to be it, more convenient though, you know, like let's say 10 yeah, years from now, 20 years from now, it, it, it'll happen. Yeah, I think it'll get more convenient. I think it'll be more easy, like, like there won't be an excuse for being lazy anymore, really. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe that's what it will. I kind of think we will because as, you know, as uh, Willow was saying, sometimes you can tell the difference now <laughs> because they're so good that you think you're eating meat, but you after it's not meat. Uh, and I've tried, you know, some of dishes, some some dishes like that, and I, and I, you know, I was I'm a foodie and I, I like my food, and I I must say that I've been happy trying some of those, you know, meat uh, substitutes. So I think eventually we will. Uh, so I I think I agree with with you, Jen, because I was going to say the similar thing that I'm definitely eating less meat than I used to, and. Everyone I know is eating less meat than they used to, but not consciously and not because of, you know, ethical reasons or anything like that or health or anything like that. It's just because there are more alternatives now and people are realizing that they're yeah. they're not bad. And a good vegetarian restaurant will make food that tastes as good as the best meat dish you know because it's what they specialize in. So it's easier now to actually find this sort of stuff and it's on every menu. But what I will say is I think Willow obviously says, yes, we will. And I'm saying, no, we won't switch in our lifetimes. But I think... One thing to note is that Willow's got a lot more lifetime left than I have. So I think that's fair and <laughs> you kind of both old. be right. Oh. <laughs> You're not that old. Um, well, sure, sure. But no, my, I guess my point is that yeah, it's definitely possible. But I, I, from the people who like meat, no one's going to say like, oh, I'm going to give up meat entirely. No one's ever said yeah. that to me. I, I think that people do genuinely like meat. I mean, we all, we all do, I suppose. I think that too with I it will become more accessible and easier to get and things like that the cost will come down but I don't think steakhouses are going away. No. So yeah, I mean definitely like, not. Yeah, so definitely I don't not think, in Texas. And, that, <laughs> and speaking of age, we have to talk <laughs> about Texas. throwing a 40th birthday bash for us that are turning 40 this year at Svelte Summer in Stockholm. Ooh. And he's not going to talk because he doesn't want people to <laughs> <laughs> part time. <laughs> Like yeah, I don't know. I, I kind space. of find kind of find these like meat uh, meat substitutes pretty expensive. Like they're they're oftentimes like as expensive as meat, which yeah, is but, strange. You know, there's, to a, me. there's a cost curve. Yeah. Like, Ab- abso- cost absolutely. Curve yeah. yeah, yeah. It's hard to justify it if it's like the twice the price. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's not just it's not just about the meat. It's like. If you're trying to be fully vegetarian, there's like other foods you can't eat because they have meat related products in like like some like chocolate and sweets and stuff like that and proper food, other proper foods, you know, that I think that's the harder part about it. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. All right. Is that, is that our unpopular opinions? It's, it's all about food except Brittany's <laughs> storybook. thing. I, so, yeah. <laughs> I think storyboard, the storybook's basically a food and I think she's just like trying to fool you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, so I guess we go into picks, and I wonder what we'll pick. Could it be food? I don't know. <laughs> I no have an food. on-topic pick for yeah, the, this okay. podcast for Spelt that is Sirens. Great. So that is great. <laughs> in April, we have Amy Dutton. She is self-teach me on Twitter and YouTube, and she is doing a talk on testing in Svelte and Svelte Kit, and that is April 15th. So look for more info in the Discord coming soon with the marketing information and time and that stuff. Cool, cool. That's a great pick. Anyone yeah. else have any? Uh, so I have a pick, and um, it's it's a very kind of niche one, but I thought I'd go with it anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know hoses, right? They water your garden with, and they kind of roll up on a big reel, and they always get kinks in them, and then they stop water, stop water, blah. Water stops flowing through them, and they're a pain, and they're heavy and bulky. So I recently discovered expanding hoses, which are like made of latex, I think, and they have a, a weird cover that kind of lets them expand to about three times their length. So it just sticks, you know, it sort of what? goes in a little bag, and then when you plug it in and you pull it, it stretches and stretches and stretches, and you can water your garden with it, and then when you let go, it constantinas back into it into its bag. It's and like I think a it's snake. Just, it's like They're a snake. Awesome. Interesting. It's just amazing. And I think like this why why did original hoses have exist? I mean it's great. 
Yeah, you do have to be careful with them. Like if they get caught yeah. in a briar or something, they poke they uh poke through and leak. So yeah, they're not they're not quite as um uh, resilient. What is a briar, by the way? Like a thorn on a rose bush is a ah. what I call a briar. Being from Georgia, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I've never heard of. Well, I've heard of it, but I don't know what it means. <laughs> now we know. I think maybe we we do have them because I've heard of a place called Briar's Brook, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Cool. All right. Yeah. Houses. Anyone? <laughs> you always have the best picks, Anthony. Well, yeah. <laughs> All right. Anyone else have any cool picks, fun picks, anything? Off topic, on topic? Well, okay. I'll, I'll just mention something that I've been trying out recently. Probably changed uh, uh, quite a bit of like how I look on camera, which is not applicable here because we're recording without a camera. But I actually tweeted. So, it's always bothered me that there's this big gap, right? So I got a webcam at the start of COVID and I was like, okay, this is good. But like, they look at all these fancy people with their DSLRs. So then I got a DSLR and that was like an uh, like a huge, like the webcam is like 150 bucks. DSLR is like maybe 700, maybe 800 if you're going with all, all the, the stuff with it. And I was like, okay, what? Like, and, and like, it's so clunky. It's it, I'm not. It's not portable. It, it's uh, it's really bad. So I was like, why is nobody working on a webcam with DSLR quality, right? If you care about your video, and you don't mind spending a bit more, but then you want it in a webcam format with webcam convenience. So I tweeted that out, and then I um, got a message from Lumina, and I've been trying it out the past week, and I think it's really nice. Like, um, it's basically hard to do DSLR as a webcam because like you need some power source um there's there's weight considerations and all that so they're actually using ai to enhance it so like if i if i move my hand or if i try to show something to the camera it actually focuses automatically on that uh, thing that i'm trying to show uh if i move my head around it it actually follows along with me and it does um white balance auto correction as well so i thought it's pretty cool so yeah that's that's my pick i guess lumina um it's a new startup i guess they're just trying to get off the ground that's cool that it follows you around nice. like that FaceTime thing, like it yeah, tracks yeah. you. That's yeah, exactly. really cool. People are usually surprised, but I use my phone as my camera. And the only problem with it is that I can't use my phone. So if I get an important phone call, I can't use it. But it does like the autofocus thing, but that would be really cool if it tracked like mm. that. Yeah, the like phones are usually pretty good, but they are uh, they can be a bit finicky to, to set up, I've found. Yeah, I, I started doing that, so I, I got a gorilla pod. Uh, you know the tripods with like the bendy legs and it's just like yeah. a balancing game on top of one of my monitors at the moment but it's very good i'll have to send a picture because i have the gorilla pod hooked onto my ring light nice <laughs> <laughs> i think we la last episode we talked a bit because i i think i picked the uh the dslr camera here if i remember correctly and i think we also mentioned the camera called uh, opal which is supposed to be some some Probably yeah, something it, similar yeah. to, to to Lumina, yeah. But yeah, it's it's definitely like ripe for for disruption. I feel okay. Cool. Any other picks? I'm I'm blanking, so I'm I'm just gonna pass. I think. Uh, yeah. Could be about. Can it be about? It could be. Uh, it could be supporting Ukraine. It can be, abso <laughs> it can be absolutely. Absolutely. It can be about yeah. anything. It could be a TV well, show. I, th I think anything. for me, it's just uh, like all the all the I think all the uh, organizations that you can donate to. I guess <laughs> for Ukraine, those are my yeah. like picks, <laughs> and I just want to yeah highlight. Um, yeah, I just actually had a. I had breakfast today with uh, someone who came from just came from Lviv, actually. It basically, you know, living living in a war zone, basically, right? Although Lviv obviously is not as bad as the other uh, cities, but yeah, it just kind of reminded me again that <laughs> that there's still a lot of things that need, we need to kind of do to help uh, people in Ukraine. So yeah, yeah, good pick. My picks are all these uh, organizations you can donate to, and we'll uh, we'll try to find uh, one that we can also link to in the in the description, so people can okay. easily uh, donate. Oh, speaking of that, we do have uh, on our logo on our website, speltsirens.dev. There is a little flag that links off to a site where you can donate. That's oh great. yeah, great. We'll take that one. That seems reasonable. Cool. All right. Oh. Steph, Willow, do you have any picks? Nah, I'm blinking also. Yeah, I'm it's hard, picks. right? 
Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. I guess we'll. Uh, I guess we'll have to do with uh, four picks. All right. So I guess that's it. Um, does anyone else have any any last few thoughts or ideas or? Uh, um, I, I think it's still early days. Uh, I think it's still early days for Svelte and Svelte Sirens. Um, I think that there's a lot of growth left in and what uh, you know we can possibly do as a community. And if people are seeing out there, like you know, there's all these people and they all have opinions. No, like we actually need more ideas. <laughs> um, and I think we're all trying to figure it out. You know, like we have day jobs and, but we all, we all like are, are here, you know, in our free time or uh, for most wow. of us in our work time yeah. because we love the, the, the framework and we, we love the, the people that we've met so far. So uh, if anyone listening to this is interested in joining in, uh, please do. 100%. Definitely. Yeah. All right. So where can, where can people find you all on Twitter, on Discord or yeah, um, speltsirens.dev has an about section with all of us in there, and I am at Brittany Postma most places. So that's B R I T T N E Y P O S T M A. It's really annoying to spell, I know, but I'll link the about page. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and I'm Coder in Heels on Twitter and Instagram. I'm Steph underscore Deets underscore on Twitter, and this dot Steffy pretty much everywhere else. I'm uh, only Space Ghost on Twitter. Nice. Cool. All right. Yeah. Thanks for uh, for coming on and uh, talking to us about Svelte Sirens. Um, I think you guys should uh, come back at some point um, so we can see if there's been any progress, which I, I'm almost certain there will have been. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, thank you so much for having us. I really appreciate it. And absolutely, we'd love to come back. I know we've been trying to get this in the works for a while. So I'm glad we all found time and seven people's hard. So yeah, <laughs> we managed We managed to do it. I think we did pretty well considering. <laughs> yep. Yeah. All right. I think so. So uh, with that said, um, goodbye, everyone. And uh, yeah. Thanks. Talk to you later. later. Bye. 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 Thanks. Bye. Bye.